Part three of the first apology of Justin Martyr. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Leeson. The first apology by Justin Martyr, translated by Alexander Roberts and James Donaldson. Part three, chapters forty through fifty five. Chapter 40. Christ's Advent Foretold And hear how it was foretold, concerning those who published his doctrine and proclaimed his appearance, the above-mentioned prophet and king speaking thus by the spirit of prophecy, day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. In the sun hath he set his tabernacle, and he as a bridegroom going out of his chamber shall rejoice as a giant to run his course. And we have thought it right and relevant to mention some other prophetic utterances of David besides these, from which you may learn how the spirit of prophecy exhorts men to live, and how he foretold the conspiracy which was formed against Christ by Herod, the king of the Jews, and the Jews themselves, and Pilate, who was your governor among them, with his soldiers, and how he should be believed on by men of every race, and how God calls him his son, and has declared that he will subdue all his enemies under him, and how the devils, as much as they can, strive to escape the power of God the Father and Lord of all, and the power of Christ himself, and how God calls all to repentance before the day of judgment comes. These things were uttered thus, Blessed is the man who hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law will he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, which shall give his fruit in his season, and his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away from the face of the earth. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Why do the heathen rage, and the people imagine new things? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder, and cast their yoke from us. He that dwelleth in the heavens shall laugh at them, and the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak to them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I been set by him a king on Zion, his holy hill, declaring the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth as thy possession. Thou shalt herd them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shalt thou dash them in pieces. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, all ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Embrace instruction, lest at any time the Lord be angry, and ye perish from the right way, when his wrath has been suddenly kindled. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Chapter 41 The Crucifixion Predicted And again, in another prophecy, the spirit of prophecy, through the same David, intimated that Christ, after he had been crucified, should reign, and spoke as follows, Sing to the Lord all the earth, and day by day declare his salvation. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, to be feared above all the gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols of devils, but God made the heavens. Glory and praise are before his face, strength and glorying are in the habitation of his holiness. Give glory to the Lord, the Father everlasting. Receive grace, and enter his presence, and worship in his holy courts. Let all the earth fear before his face, let it be established and not shaken. Let them rejoice among the nations, the Lord hath reigned from the tree. Chapter 42 Prophecy Using the Past Tense 
but when the spirit of prophecy speaks of things that are about to come to pass as if they had already taken place as may be observed even in the passages already cited by me that this circumstance may afford no excuse to readers for misinterpreting them we will make even this also quite plain the things which he absolutely knows will take place he predicts as if already they had taken place and that the utterances must be thus received you will perceive if you give your attention to them the words cited above david uttered fifteen hundred years before christ became a man and was crucified and no one of those who lived before him nor yet of his contemporaries afforded joy to the gentiles by being crucified but our jesus christ being crucified and dead rose again and having ascended to heaven reigned and by those things which were published in his name among all nations by the apostles there is joy afforded to those who expect the immortality promised by him chapter forty three responsibility asserted but lest some suppose from what has been said by us that we say that whatever happens happens by a fatal necessity because it is foretold as known beforehand this too we explain we have learned from the prophets and we hold it to be true that punishments and chastisements and good rewards are rendered according to the merit of each man's actions since if it be not so but all things happen by fate neither is anything at all in our own power for if it be fated that this man e g be good and this other evil neither is the former meritorious nor the latter to be blamed and again unless the human race have the power of avoiding evil and choosing good by free choice they are not accountable for their actions of whatever kind they be but that it is by free choice they both walk uprightly and stumble we thus demonstrate we see the same man making a transition to opposite things now if it had been fated that he were to be either good or bad he could never have been capable of both the opposites nor of so many transitions but not even would some be good and others bad since we thus make fate the cause of evil and exhibit her as acting in opposition to herself or that which has been already stated would seem to be true that neither virtue nor vice is anything but that things are only reckoned good or evil by opinion which as the true word shows is the greatest impiety and wickedness but this we assert is inevitable fate that they who choose the good have worthy rewards and they who choose the opposite have their merited rewards for not like other things as trees and quadrupeds which cannot act by choice did god make man for neither would he be worthy of reward or praise did he not of himself choose the good but were created for this end nor if he were evil would he be worthy of punishment not being evil of himself but being able to be nothing else than what he was made chapter forty four not nullified by prophecy and the holy spirit of prophecy taught us this telling us by moses that god spoke thus to the man first created behold before thy face are good and evil choose the good and again by the other prophet isaiah that the following utterance was made as if from god the father and lord of all wash you make you clean put away evils from your souls learn to do well judge the orphan and plead for the widow and come and let us reason together saith the lord and if your sins be as scarlet i will make them white as wool and if they be red as crimson i will make them white as snow and if ye be willing and obey me ye shall eat the good of the land but if ye do not obey me the sword shall devour you for the mouth of the lord hath spoken it and that expression the sword shall devour you does not mean that the disobedient shall be slain by the sword but the sword of god is fire of which they who choose to do wickedly become the fuel wherefore he says the sword shall devour you for the mouth of the lord hath spoken it and if he had spoken concerning a sword that cuts and at once dispatches he would not have said shall devour and so too plato when he says the blame is his who chooses and god is blameless took this from the prophet moses and uttered it for moses is more ancient than all the greek writers and whatever both philosophers and poets have said concerning the immortality of the soul or punishments after death or contemplation of things heavenly 
or doctrines of the like kind they have received such suggestions from the prophets as have enabled them to understand and interpret these things and hence there seem to be seeds of truth among all men but they are charged with not accurately understanding the truth when they assert contradictories so that what we say about future events being foretold we do not say it as if they came about by a fatal necessity but god foreknowing all that shall be done by all men and it being his decree that the future actions of men shall all be recompensed according to their several value he foretells by the spirit of prophecy that he will bestow meet rewards according to the merit of the actions done always urging the human race to effort and recollection showing that he cares and provides for men but by the agency of the devils death has been decreed against those who read the books of histaspes or of the sibyl or of the prophets that through fear they may prevent men who read them from receiving the knowledge of the good and may retain them in slavery to themselves which however they could not always effect for not only do we fearlessly read them but as you see bring them for your inspection knowing that their contents will be pleasing to all and if we persuade even a few our gain will be very great for as good husbandmen we shall receive the reward from the master chapter forty five christ's session in heaven foretold and that god the father of all would bring christ to heaven after he had raised him from the dead and would keep him there until he has subdued his enemies the devils and until the number of those who are foreknown by him as good and virtuous is complete on whose account he has still delayed the consummation hear what was said by the prophet david these are his words the lord said unto my lord sit thou at my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool the lord shall send to thee the rod of power out of jerusalem and rule thou in the midst of thine enemies with thee is the government in the day of thy power in the beauties of thy saints from the womb of morning have i begotten thee that which he says he shall send to thee the rod of power out of jerusalem is predictive of the mighty word which his apostles going forth from jerusalem preached everywhere and though death is decreed against those who teach or at all confess the name of christ we everywhere both embrace and teach it and if you also read these words in a hostile spirit ye can do no more as i said before than kill us which indeed does no harm to us but to you and all who unjustly hate us and do not repent brings eternal punishment by fire chapter forty six the word in the world before christ but lest some should without reason and for the perversion of what we teach maintain that we say that christ was born one hundred and fifty years ago under cyrenius and subsequently in the time of pontius pilate taught what we say he taught and should cry out against us as though all men who were born before him were irresponsible let us anticipate and solve the difficulty we have been taught that christ is the firstborn of god and we have declared above all that he is the word of whom every race of men were partakers and those who lived reasonably are christians even though they have been thought atheists as among the greeks socrates and heraclitus and men like them and among the barbarians abraham and ananias and azarias and mishael and elias and many others whose actions and names we now decline to recount because we know it would be tedious so that even they who lived before christ and lived without reason were wicked and hostile to christ and slew those who lived reasonably but who through the power of the word according to the will of god the father and lord of all he was born of a virgin as a man and was named jesus and was crucified and died and rose again and ascended into heaven an intelligent man will be able to comprehend from what has been already so largely said and we since the proof of this subject is less needful now will pass for the present to the proof of those things which are urgent chapter forty seven desolation of judea foretold that the land of the jews then was to be laid waste hear what was said by the spirit of prophecy and the words were spoken as if from the person of the people wondering at what had happened they are these zion is a wilderness jerusalem a desolation the house of our sanctuary has become a curse 
and the glory which our fathers blessed is burned up with fire, and all its glorious things are laid waste, and thou refrainest thyself at these things, and hast held thy peace, and hast humbled us very sore. And ye are convinced that Jerusalem has been laid waste, as was predicted, and concerning its desolation, and that no one should be permitted to inhabit it, there was the following prophecy by Isaiah. Their land is desolate, their enemies consume it before them, and none of them shall dwell therein. And that it is guarded by you, lest any one dwell in it, and that death is decreed against a Jew apprehended entering it, you know very well. Chapter 48 Christ's Work and Death Foretold and that it was predicted that our Christ should heal all diseases and raise the dead, hear what was said. There are these words, At his coming the lame shall leap as an heart, and the tongue of the stammerer shall be clear speaking. The blind shall see, and the lepers shall be cleansed, and the dead shall rise and walk about. And that he did those things you can learn from the acts of Pontius Pilate and how it was predicted by the spirit of prophecy that he and those who hoped in him should be slain, hear what was said by Isaiah. These are the words, Behold now the righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and just men are taken away, and no man considereth. From the presence of wickedness is the righteous man taken, and his burial shall be in peace. He is taken from our midst. Chapter 49 his rejection by the Jews foretold. And again, how it was said by the same Isaiah, that the Gentile nations who were not looking for him should worship him, but the Jews who always expected him should not recognize him when he came. And the words are spoken as from the person of Christ, and they are these, I was manifest to them that asked not for me, I was found of them that sought me not, I said, Behold me, to a nation that called not on my name. I spread out my hands to a disobedient and gainsaying people, to those who walked in a way that is not good, but follow after their own sins, a people that provoketh me to anger to my face. For the Jews, having the prophecies, and being always in expectation of the Christ to come, did not recognize him, and not only so, but even treated him shamefully. But the Gentiles, who had never heard anything about Christ, until the apostles set out from Jerusalem and preached concerning him, and gave them the prophecies, were filled with joy and faith, and cast away their idols, and dedicated themselves to the unbegotten God through Christ. And that it was foreknown that these infamous things should be uttered against those who confessed Christ, and that those who slandered him, and said that it was well to preserve the ancient customs, should be miserable, hear what was briefly said by Isaiah, it is this, Woe unto them that call sweet bitter, and bitter sweet. Chapter 50 His Humiliation Predicted But that, having become man for our sakes, he endured to suffer and to be dishonored, and that he shall come again with glory, hear the prophecies which relate to this. They are these. Because they delivered his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, he has borne the sin of many, and shall make intercession for the transgressors. For behold, my servant shall deal prudently, and shall be exalted, and shall be greatly extolled. As many were astonished at thee, so marred shall thy form be before men, and so hidden from them thy glory. So shall many nations wonder, and the kings shall shut their mouths at him. For they to whom it was not told concerning him, and they who have not heard, shall understand. O Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? We have declared before him as a child, as a root in a dry ground. He had no form nor glory, and we saw him, and there was no form nor comeliness. But his form was dishonored and marred more than the sons of men. A man under the stroke, and knowing how to bear infirmity, because his face was turned away. He was despised, and of no reputation. It is he who bears our sins, and is afflicted for us, yet we did esteem him smitten, stricken, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, every man has wandered in his own way, 
and he delivered him for our sins, and he opened not his mouth for all his affliction. He was brought as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before his shearer is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away. Accordingly, after he was crucified, even all his acquaintances forsook him, having denied him, and afterwards, when he had risen from the dead and appeared to them, and had taught them to read the prophecies in which all these things were foretold as coming to pass, and when they had seen him ascending into heaven, and had believed, and had received power sent thence by him upon them, and went to every race of men, they taught these things, and were called apostles. Chapter 51 The Majesty of Christ and that the spirit of prophecy might signify to us that he who suffers these things has an ineffable origin, and rules his enemies, he spake thus. His generation who shall declare, because his life is cut off from the earth, for their transgressions he comes to death. And I will give the wicked for his burial, and the rich for his death, because he did no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. And the Lord is pleased to cleanse him from the stripe, if he be given for sin, your soul shall see his seed prolonged in days. And the Lord is pleased to deliver his soul from grief, to show him light, and to form him with knowledge, to justify the righteous who richly serveth many. And he shall bear our iniquities. Therefore he shall inherit many, and he shall divide the spoil of the strong, because his soul was delivered to death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and he was delivered up for their transgressions. Here, too, how he was to ascend into heaven, according to prophecy. It was thus spoken, Lift up the gates of heaven, be ye opened, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. And how also he should come again out of heaven with glory? Hear what was spoken in reference to this by the prophet Jeremiah. His words are, Behold, as the Son of Man he cometh in the clouds of heaven, and his angels with him. Chapter 52 Certain Fulfillment of Prophecy Since, then, we prove that all things which have already happened had been predicted by the prophets before they came to pass, we must necessarily believe also that those things which are in like manner predicted, but are yet to come to pass, shall certainly happen. For as the things which have already taken place came to pass when foretold, and even though unknown, so shall the things that remain, even though they be unknown and disbelieved, yet come to pass. For the prophets have proclaimed two advents of his, the one, that which is already past, when he came as a dishonored and suffering man, but the second, when, according to prophecy, he shall come from heaven with glory, accompanied by his angelic host, when also he shall raise the bodies of all men who have lived, and shall clothe those of the worthy with immortality, and shall send those of the wicked, endued with eternal sensibility, into everlasting fire with the wicked devils. And that these things also have been foretold as yet to be, we will prove. By Ezekiel the prophet it was said, Joint shall be joined to joint, and bone to bone, and flesh shall grow again and every knee shall bow to the Lord, and every tongue shall confess him. And in what kind of sensation and punishment the wicked are to be, hear from what was said in like manner with reference to this, it is as follows. Their worm shall not rest, and their fire shall not be quenched, and then they shall repent when it profits them not. And what the people of the Jews shall say and do, when they see him coming in glory, has been thus predicted by Zechariah the prophet. I will command the four winds to gather the scattered children, I will command the north wind to bring them, and the south wind that it keep not back. And then in Jerusalem there shall be great lamentation, not the lamentation of mouths or of lips, but the lamentation of the heart, and they shall rend not their garments, but their hearts. Tribe by tribe they shall mourn, and then they shall look on him whom they have pierced, and they shall say, Why, O Lord, hast thou made us to err from thy way? The glory which our fathers blessed has for us been turned into shame. Chapter 53 Summary of the Prophecies Though we could bring forward many other prophecies, we forbear, judging these sufficient for the persuasion of those who have ears to hear and understand. 
and considering also that those persons are able to see that we do not make mere assertions without being able to produce proof like those fables that are told of the so-called sons of jupiter for with what reason should we believe of a crucified man that he is the firstborn of the unbegotten god and himself will pass judgment on the whole human race unless we had found testimonies concerning him published before he came and was born as man and unless we saw that things had happened accordingly the devastation of the land of the jews and men of every race persuaded by his teaching through the apostles and rejecting their old habits in which being deceived they had their conversation yea seeing ourselves too and knowing that the christians from among the gentiles are both more numerous and more true than those from among the jews and samaritans for all the other human races are called gentiles by the spirit of prophecy but the Jewish and Samaritan races are called the tribe of Israel and the house of Jacob. And the prophecy in which it was predicted that there should be more believers from the Gentiles than from the Jews and Samaritans, we will produce. It ran thus, Rejoice, O barren, thou that dost not bear, break forth and shout, thou that dost not travail, because many more are the children of the desolate than of her that hath an husband. For all the Gentiles were desolate of the true God, serving the works of their hands. But the Jews and Samaritans, having the word of God delivered to them by the prophets, and always expecting the Christ, did not recognize him when he came, except some few, of whom the spirit of prophecy by Isaiah had predicted that they should be saved. He spoke as from their person. Except the Lord had left us a seed, we should have been as Sodom and Gomorrah. For Sodom and Gomorrah are related by Moses to have been cities of ungodly men, which God burned with fire and brimstone, and overthrew, no one of their inhabitants being saved except a certain stranger, a Chaldean by birth, whose name was Lot, with whom also his daughters were rescued. And those who care may yet see their whole country desolate and burned, and remaining barren, and to show how those from among the Gentiles were foretold as more true and more believing, we will cite what was said by Isaiah the prophet, for he spoke as follows, Israel is uncircumcised in heart, but the Gentiles are uncircumcised in the flesh. So many things therefore as these, when they are seen with the eye, are enough to produce conviction and belief in those who embrace the truth, and are not bigoted in their opinions, nor are governed by their passions. Chapter 54. Origin of Heathen Mythology But those who hand down the myths which the poets have made, adduce no proof to the youths who learn them, and we proceed to demonstrate that they have been uttered by the influence of the wicked demons, to deceive and lead astray the human race. For having heard it proclaimed through the prophets that the Christ was to come, and that the ungodly among men were to be punished by fire, they put forward many to be called sons of Jupiter, under the impression that they would be able to produce in men the idea that the things which were said with regard to Christ were mere marvellous tales, like the things which were said by the poets. And these things were said both among the Greeks and among all nations where they, the demons, heard the prophets foretelling that Christ would specially be believed in, but that in hearing what was said by the prophets they did not accurately understand it, but imitated what was said of our Christ, like men who are in error, we will make plain. The prophet Moses, then, was, as we have already said, older than all writers, and by him, as we have also said before, it was thus predicted, There shall not fail a prince from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until he come for whom it is reserved, and he shall be the desire of the Gentiles, binding his fold to the vine, washing his robe in the blood of the grape. The devils, accordingly, when they heard these prophetic words, said that Bacchus was the son of Jupiter, and gave out that he was the discoverer of the vine, and they number wine, or the ass, among his mysteries, and they taught that, having been torn in pieces, he ascended into heaven. And because in the prophecy of Moses it had not been expressly intimated whether he who was to come was the son of God, and whether he would, riding on the foal, remain on earth or ascend into heaven, and because the name of foal could mean either the foal of an ass or the foal of a horse, they, not knowing whether he who was foretold would bring the foal of an ass or of a horse, as the sign of his coming, 
nor whether he was the son of god as we said above or of man they gave out that bellerophon a man born of man himself ascended to heaven on his horse pegasus and when they heard it said by the other prophet isaiah that he should be born of a virgin and by his own means ascend into heaven they pretended that perseus was spoken of and when they knew what was said as has been cited above in the prophecies written aforetime strong as a giant to run his course they said that hercules was strong and had journeyed over the whole earth and when again they learned that it had been foretold that he should heal every sickness and raise the dead they produced Esculapius. Chapter 55. Symbols of the Cross But in no instance, not even in any of those called sons of Jupiter, did they imitate the being crucified, for it was not understood by them, all the things said of it having been put symbolically. And this, as the prophet foretold, is the greatest symbol of his power and role, as is also proved by the things which fall under our observation. For consider all the things in the world, whether without this form they could be administered or have any community. For the sea is not traversed except that trophy which is called a sail abide safe in the ship, and the earth is not ploughed without it. Diggers and mechanics do not their work, except with tools which have this shape. And the human form differs from that of the irrational animals in nothing else than in its being erect and having the hands extended, and having on the face extending from the forehead what is called the nose, through which there is respiration for the living creature, and this shows no other form than that of the cross. And so it was said by the prophet, The breath before our face is the Lord Christ. And the power of this form is shown by your own symbols on what are called vexilla, banners, and trophies, with which all your state possessions are made, using these as the insignia of your power and government, even though you do so unwittingly. And with this form you consecrate the images of your emperors when they die, and you name them gods by inscriptions. Since, therefore, we have urged you both by reason and by an evident form, and to the utmost of our ability, we know that now we are blameless even though you disbelieve, for our part is done and finished. End of Part 3